Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about another degree and how to apply that degree into the oil and gas industry. That is right, how to apply a master's or a PhD in any focus area that you have into the oil and gas industry. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video. Subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video below so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload whenever I want. Well, let's get to the content. Okay, so let's say you pursued a master's or a PhD out of a couple circumstances. One, there were no jobs when you graduated as a bachelor of science in petroleum engineering or any degree that you have, so you decided to pursue an MS or a PhD. Another circumstance is you wanted to pursue higher education, so you graduated with a bachelor's of science, got a couple years of work experience, and decided to go back to school for an MS or a PhD. The second circumstance was my situation. Now, to clarify, I got all my degrees while working full time. So I did a part time master's at Texas A&M University and got a master's of science in petroleum engineering. My focus was on drawdown management and drawdown optimization, particularly in the Midland Basin. And that's what my thesis was over. So how did I manage to apply what I learned in my MS into the oil and gas industry? And then I'll also talk a little bit about what PhDs can do based on my observations. So the first thing I did when I applied my master's of science to the oil and gas industry is how I started. I knew I wanted to pick a topic that was applicable to the industry and that was a true industry question or a problem, like a demand, for example. How do you flow back your wells and how are you going to make the most out of the wells that you produce from? Well. I decided to take a scientific method approach, which is what I'm going to talk about a little bit more and how you can apply the MS or PhD in anything that you've done and how to apply it in the oil and gas industry. I took the scientific method approach and I conducted DCA, decline curve analysis, RTA, rate transient analysis, PTA, pressure transient analysis, and numerical simulation to come up with an answer of what is the optimal drawdown strategy. Now, the DCA, RTA, PTA were look back methods. The numerical simulation is a feature method, or the predictability method. So I was able to apply my knowledge of drawdown management and all the tools in the reservoir engineering toolbox into the oil and gas industry. I was able to practice on my DCA, get good forecasts, practice on my RTA, get good forecasts, practice on my PTA, develop those PTA skills because they're mostly applicable to conventional reservoirs. And then I also practice on my numerical simulation skills. This allowed me to share my story in presenting papers to conferences, presenting papers internally, conducting drawdown management studies within companies that I was working for, and been able to share my knowledge on drawdown management with the company that I'm currently working for. So, that is how I managed to apply the masters to the oil and gas industry. It really was based on how I started because I wanted to pick a topic that was an industry demand and then being able to use the tools that were available in the industry to help with my research in drawdown management. I read almost every single modern paper or recent paper on drawdown management as much as possible. Now, Let's get some takeaways from how I managed to get the MS or the PhD into the oil and gas industry. The first thing I did was critical thinking. Apply my critical thinking skills similarly to how I conducted the masters. And that's how I come up with applying my knowledge on applying higher education to the oil and gas industry. Applying those critical thinking skills, the who, what, when, where, why, and how is very crucial. The next thing I did was insert my expertise wherever it was appropriate. If there were questions that were relating to drawdown management, I was the person that was the go-to and mentioned that I did a thesis on this. I got my master's and that was my focus on this in reservoir engineering. I would like to be involved. So I would always raise my hand 
for certain projects relating to drawdown management. The next thing I did was share the knowledge, whether if it was internal or external to the company that I was working for. So for one of the companies that I was working for in the past, I conducted a drawdown management study as a look back to see if our drawdown management was, was right, was, was fine. Then I also presented my thesis and everything to Ertech and wrote a paper on that for my master's. So uh, that was one of the requirements of writing a paper and publishing it as part of your master's. So sharing your knowledge internally and externally is another way I apply the master's to the oil and gas industry. So those are the three main ways that I was able to apply my knowledge. The most general way, whether if you have a master's or a PhD in a subject that you are not working on right now. So if your current job is very different from your master's or your PhD, then applying your critical thinking skills is gonna be necessary. Applying the scientific method is gonna be the best way on how you could apply your oil and gas, the oil and gas application. The next thing that I would mention as far as a general application for an MS or a PhD into the oil and gas industry is displaying your expertise whenever you need it and whenever it's appropriate. So that was a takeaway. And then finally, putting yourself out there, whether if it's networking and SPE and how you can apply your MS or PhD by attending study groups. The Gulf Coast section of SPE is really good at that. The SP Permian Basin section now has a reservoir engineering study group. I started it and I, there were, so there's a production and facility study group. Other members have started that as well. So there are technical study groups that are making the making the networking scene very technical and the knowledge sharing a lot more fun. And those are the primary reasons why people want to even join SPE, the Society of Petroleum Engineers. So they can learn from experts such as yourself, who I'm assuming that if you're listening to this, you probably have a higher education degree or an advanced degree, like an MS or a PhD. Now, the question you may be asking is what makes that differentiator between the MS or a PhD? Well, other than the doctor in front of your name, PhD will, is more extensive research. The PhD is a particular problem that you have committed your time and energy to answer. And hopefully that time and energy that you've answered for the PhD was something that would be of use for the oil and gas industry. So you are looked to as an expert. You are looked to as a subject matter expert, or I wouldn't say one trick pony. The way you can avoid doing that is, again, applying those critical thinking skills in the scientific method as if you were pursuing another PhD to solve an industry problem. But the only difference is, is that you're not spending years and years to solve the problem. You're expected to solve the problem in a much more efficient time. So that is it, folks. That is everything that I wanted to mention as far as how to apply your MS or a PhD into the oil and gas industry. There are a few takeaways based on my personal experience in drawdown management at, in, from my MS in, for, in petroleum engineering at Texas A&M University. And there are general applications as well, whether if you have an MS or a PhD, whether if it's in data analytics, whether if it's in drilling, whether if it's in even in chemical engineering or in mathematics, you can apply some of those critical thinking skills in the scientific method into anything that you do in the higher education. And then show your knowledge, share your knowledge, because you are leaned on as a subject matter expert in the industry. It's time to prove yourself on that. Well, folks, that's everything that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you have a good day. This is Yogi Shipradhan. Yoshi Pradhan, signing off.